welcome to this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV. Tipperary Camogie's official YouTube channel and uh, we've loads to cover this week um, so we'll get right into it and I just want to welcome Thomas Conway, sports journalist with Nina Gargin and Siobhan O'Neill who are joining us to preview the big game this weekend. On Saturday we have the FBD Insurance Senior County Final between Drummond Inch and Clonty Rossmore. Thomas, Siobhan, you're both very welcome to the show. Thanks, Shirley. Thanks, Shirley. Thanks for having me on. Uh, before we chat to you, um, we're just going to play some clips from uh, the recent FBD Insurance Senior Final Preview. Uh, long, it was held in the beautiful Rock of Cashel. And Tipperary PRO, Philly Ryan spoke for both captains, Clonty's Cora Hennessy and Drummond Inch C from McGrath, and both managers, Kieran Hammersley from Clonty and Pat Ryan from Drummond Inch. I have with me Cora Hennessy, Clonty captain, and I'm going to fire a few questions. Very welcome, Cora. Thanks, Philly. Uh, this time last year, you were preparing for, to play Drummond the final. Are things different this time of year, this time round, or how does it feel? Well, probably, I suppose, a year has gone by, so that's going to bring experience in itself, you know, and you only could only learn from what went on last year we analyzed that game we analyzed different games this year probably more so probably concentrated on things that we weren't doing so well throughout the year and last year and just kind of developed from there you know right you seem to have really regrouped uh, since the group stages you had some defeats mm. to to drum and anna carty but you've really improved in the last couple of games you had fantastic wins in the quarterfinal and semi-final has that changed between the group stages and now yeah well that's group games they kind of take a law themselves you can kind of sometimes play within yourself maybe so yeah we won some we lost some but you know we just again as I said we just kind of analyzed every game worked on the feedback and we took something from every game whether we won it we lost or whatever we took something from all those games but then when it came to the crunch games you know you know it was in the tank then to get over the line and that's what's most important isn't sure it? was yeah and do you consider uh, what do you consider drums main strengths I suppose they have a lot of them haven't they, they have they have <laughs> of course they have and they're not county champions by chance you know they have hurlers all over the field they can they can hurl you know all over the field and they've got good leaders all over the field too but so have we you know and we've got people younger people who've really stepped up this year and we're really looking forward to it great had you any little injury worries coming into the match and how's preparations going over the last fortnight yeah preparations are really good um just come from training there at half nine this morning there was 30 people there togged out ready to go um, no injury concerns that I can think of anyway so everyone's really looking forward to it commitment is huge you know massive sacrifice has been made with a massive panel there having the junior and senior team this year has been huge for us it's I think great. it's probably one of the team, factors yeah, yeah. semi-final last weekend yeah yeah just a big focus on intensity of training and I think that's probably one of the factors that has helped us this year we had FBD on board this mm. year for all our adult uh, competitions uh, for minor and adult do you think it's added to the competition yeah, I, I do actually. I just think there's been great noise created about Camogie this year. It's everywhere. Everyone's talking about it, young people and older people. And the promotion of the game, I think, has really stepped up this year. And I think that's really important. Thanks a million, Cora. Yeah. Thank you. We have with me now Aoife McGrath, uh, captain of Drum Senior Camogie, captain of TIP as well. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward to our senior final, Drum against the Lonty, Saturday, November 20th. Uh, you're welcome, Aoife. Thanks, Philly. Uh, you know Clonoti so well after playing them uh, a couple of times. Uh, you play along some of their, uh, some of the Clonoti players with tip. Does this make it easier or harder? Yeah, look, they, we played against them a good few times over the last couple of years. Um, they're really good players. We know that from, I suppose, the county set as well, like Emer Luquin, Cote Van. Um, you know, super players, but like they've other ones, Core Hennessy, um, Courtney Ryan, Emer Burke, loads of players all over the field, like that are top quality. And look, we know that they'll pose a serious challenge for us. Uh, you're going for three in a row. Is there a great bond in the in the, in the drum camp at the moment? Uh, and 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 also, are you excited about the three in a row? Um, yeah. Look, I suppose it's nothing we've thought about too much. Like, um, do you know, every year you start out at the start of the year and you want to win a county final. Like that's the aim. Um, winning a couple in a row is obviously nice, but it's it you don't really think about it too much. I suppose, look, we've lost a lot down through the years too, so to finally be winning a few is really nice. But look, we haven't really thought about the three in a row whole pile, no. And it's a huge honour to be captain of a, of a club team going into a final. And Does this bring any extra pressure, any extra jobs? Um, look, it's an absolute honour for me to, to go out and, and captain the girls. Like, um, They're a super bunch. And, and look, I suppose, yeah, you want to perform, but at the end of the day, we have 15 leaders on the field and more coming off the bench, and that's the most important thing. It's not about one person, it's about the, the collective team and the panel. Um, so, so not really, no, I suppose, just 
I suppose the pressure yeah you want to perform but like we know that we have 15 on the field that are going to do a job on the day right and uh, what do you see as Clonty's key strengths in the final Oh, sure, look, um, I'm caught Van is a, is a massive player for them, like, you know, she's super accurate from freeze, from play, whatever, like, you know, so she'll need to be tied down, I suppose. But look, they've other players, like I mentioned, uh, Emer Burke, Casey Hennessy, like, they've loads of scoring options, like, so they'll all need to be tied down as well. But yeah, yeah, look, we'll have to contain their forwards, keep down the free count and hopefully take it from there. Just a couple of more transitions before the final now. How have preparations been going? Good, yeah. Um, <laughs> this time of the year getting light and getting getting uh, pitches is tough but no it's great it's look it, you who wouldn't want to be playing at this time of the year like you want to be involved in the business end of the championship and if that means playing in winter sure we'll take it and, and we'll enjoy it while it's going thanks a million Aoife and best look in the final right I'd like to welcome Kieran Hammersley manager of uh, Tlaloti Senior Camogie they're facing the final on November 20th and Strum they're old foes. Uh, it's great to be back in the final again, Kieran. Would you prefer to meet a different team, or are you glad to meet in Drum in the final? Um, I don't really mind Philly, to be honest. You know, who's ever in the final now is going to be very, very strong. And I suppose we do know a lot about Drum. We played them in the group. Uh, we played them, as you say, in the 2020 final. So, look, for us, we're happy to be there, and we want to be very, very competitive on the day and go on and win the game. You know. Have you learned anything from the championship so far this year? Yeah, we learned a lot, Philly, to be honest. We had four games in the group, uh, a quarter-final, semi-final. Team has kind of changed um, a, a nice bit throughout those games, kind of know what our strengths are now, you know, and we try to play to them as much as possible. You'll be looking to peak now for the final at the right time. What, what, how has training gone uh, in, in the last uh, two weeks there? Yeah, the preparation has been very, very good. Um, I was really, really happy with us in the quarter-final against Duhara. It was a very, very, very tough game going up there. And the semi-final again, I thought we put in a very strong performance against Anna Carty, a really good Anna Carty side. And, um, and training since then has been very, very good. So, you know, we're looking forward to the game now, you know. So. What do you think Clonty's main strengths are coming into this final? I think the resilience of the group has been fantastic. You know, uh, we've lost, as you know, Claude Cork early on in the year. Uh, Sarah Friday went abroad, um, and we've been beaten in two games in the group. We've stayed coming back. We've had tough games in a quarter final, semi final. We turned the corner and we've pushed on. You know, so I think the resilience of the group is a big strength. You know. Right. Looking at that, um, are you going to do anything different uh, to prepare uh, this week coming? Uh, we well, have another fortnight to go. Over the next fortnight, are you going to? How do you think preparation is going to go over the next fortnight? I think we we'll just focus on ourselves uh, early on in the week anyway and try and look at aspects of our game, look at the semi-final, look at the quarter-final, look at areas that we're doing well, try and reinforce them, look at the opposition, look at areas that we can close them down, look at areas that we can exploit. So the preparation will be kind of focused a bit, a bit on them and a bit on us and hopefully then come the final we'll be able to impl implement it, you know. Thanks a million, Kieran. No Looking problem, forward to yeah, a great yeah. final. Yeah, no problem. I'd like to welcome Pat Ryan here, manager of Drum Senior Camogie. Uh, they're heading for three titles in a row. And uh, you're going for three titles in a row on, on, on um, the 20th, uh, Saturday. Uh, is this something the group have spoken about during the year? No. No. It's really every, every, year, every year is single focus. You start out the year and your, your aim is to get to a county final and that uh, it hasn't changed with that. We don't, we don't mention it from the first time we go back training until, until, we're, until, until we're there. Then when you know you're there, you're there. Simple. Very good. And would you be happy with the team's performance so far this year? Um, maybe not as consistent as we were last year. We played a, Our best performance was against Thorla Sarsfield. We played very well that day. There was, we were flying, but then the next two games were a bit patchy and we, it's, it's just something we have to work on again for the final. Yeah, and uh, what do you think uh, Clonty's main strengths are? The main strength, they've, 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 no, their main strength, they run the ball, they're tough, they're physical, they're, the whole lot, they have, they, they have the full package and they're, 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 look, when you get to a final like that, they're there on merit, so they're, they're, there's, everything is, their team, they're a good strong team, and that's what they're going to, they're going to bring a lot of physicality and everything to the, for the match Sunday. Uh, you beat Clonty in last year's final, uh, and you bet him again in the group stages this year. Is there any danger of any bit of complacency setting in there, Pat? No, and if it is, it'll be it'll be wiped out fairly soon because it's just complacency. Complacency is the devil. You can't you can't be complacent. Not at this not at this level. Not playing the opposition like the, the caliber that you're playing. You can't have complacency going into a final. There's no room for it. You have a lot of big matches coming up, Pat. Uh, you have the postponed uh, 2020 Munster Final Senior Club coming up as well. Have you spoken about that game, or, or do you, have you tried to concentrate on the County Senior Final first? We concentrate on what we concentrate on what's ahead first. 
county final is is the is the is the bread and butter what you go out for every year. Anything after that, that you hopefully we do progress, it'll be a bonus. But you, you settle your team down to, for look at, to to get to try to be the top of your own county first, and then move on from there. Thanks, Pat, and best looks out of me. To begin, uh, Siobhan, just I suppose looking back at your semi final defeat to Clonty, I know a big blow to Anna Carty and obviously to yourself, you were out injured. Um, but um, I just wonder the fact that she had beaten them maybe earlier in the group stages, did that maybe cause a small bit of complacency with Anna Carty and you know, or Clonty maybe more up for it? Or how would you explain maybe um, their strong start and your slow start? Yeah, I suppose, Geraldine, yeah, the fact that they had beaten us in the group stages of the championship was probably a major driving force uh, for them coming into the semi-final. Um, but, like, I, I wouldn't say that we were complacent. We, we were expecting Penalty um, to come at us, and come at us really hard, which they did. Um, they started way stronger than us, and unfortunately, we just couldn't get to grips with the game at all. Um, we probably played a bit better maybe in the second half, uh, but still wasn't good enough. We probably maybe only heard it for the last five minutes. And at that, like when we did play well, we brought the game back to two points. Like. Um, but yeah, Kenoti probably, the, the fact that we we did beat them um, was definitely a driving, a driving force and added a lot of motivation to their game coming in, coming in against us. But I wouldn't say for any minute that we were complacent. We, we respect Kenoti. We're playing on for the last couple of years we always there's always massive competition between between both of us but uh, in fairness to Kenoti they were the better team on the day and, and deserved the victory and Thomas I know you covered that game for the Nina Gargin. Um what impressed you most about uh, about Kenoti? Yeah I, I was down in Dundrum that day it, it was a it was a really interesting game Geraldine it was you know I had there were two guys beside me and they left it around maybe 58, 59 minutes. Um, now, I kind of have a policy of never leaving games early, but, you know, I, I was inclined to forgive them on this occasion because, you know, Clonality had a considerable lead and uh, although there had been stoppages and you could predict that extra time would be played, uh, I don't think anybody anticipated how it would actually unravel. Because uh, I think there was, I think I got a 14 minutes of... of I think it ended, I, I, my stopwatch was at 74 when it ended. And, uh, you know, Anna Carty had, had very nearly uh, snatched a draw uh, at the very least. So on balance, um, and, and Siobhan might beg to differ, but I thought Clonality were, probably, were the better side, all right. Um, they seemed a little bit more polished and they kind of had, you know, they're able to really turn it on at times during the game. They did it for for much of the first half. Now they're prone to kind of lapses in concentration as well. Um, and that was reflected at the end uh, when Anna Carty came back at them. Uh, but they can be really, really impressive, uh, particularly in terms of their forward line. And it's not just Coy uh or Casey Hennessy. They're, they're, you know, the protagonists, the, the marquee forwards. But the kind of awareness and intelligence of up to their forwards, they really operate well. Literally. They know each other kind of intimately. Uh, they're, they're extremely athletic and, and they're able to judge one another. You know, they play off one another. Um, and that, I think, is a core part of their strategy. It allows them, I suppose, to, to open up attacks. But it also enables them to win frees. And then I suppose when you have a free taker like Coach Ivan, who, who rarely misses, that's really valuable. Um, you know, and I think that they really have maximized that aspect of their game. They, they know, you know, if it's kind of a scrappy game and, and, and space is difficult to come by, uh, they can tunnel their way in and they can win frees. And then they know quite will. Uh, more often than not, uh, will slot them over. Exactly. I suppose, Siobhan, you know, you said there yourself, um, you probably didn't play well enough even in the second half, but you did improve in the second half and certainly you finished very stronger, strong. And when you saw the way you bought them back, you know, is there regrets from Manicarty there, I suppose, that you didn't play that well for the whole, for the whole uh, 60 minutes and, you know, maybe things could have been different and you could be preparing for a county final now? Yes, def definitely. Like look, looking back at it now, when when the dust has settled on it, like we we didn't perform at all. Like and 
we did perform during the year, like with ma massive wins against against Drum and, and Canolti and Nina in the quarterfinal even. Um, and you want to bring your big performance of the year when it matters, like in the county semi-final and if you went on to a county final and like, it was disappointing as a group uh, for the players and the management that we just didn't, we didn't do ourselves justice on the day. Um, and that, that is the disappointing factor. And it's hard to put your finger on that or why did it happen? Like as preparation up to the final was spot on, like warm up was spot on. Everything just seemed, seemed to be going perfectly. But un unfortunately, when the ball was thrown in that day in, in Dundrum, things just didn't work for us and didn't click for us. Um, but credit due to Canolti, as I said earlier, they, they were the better team on the day. They took the game to us. And um, we had no response, really. As I said, we did. Our performance did improve as the game went on. But I'd say if, if we had won the game at the end, there would have been a lot of trouble because we were gone well into 43 or 44 minutes. Like, um, But it just shows when we did hurl like that, we are very even uh, with Canolti. Um, but unfortunately, it just didn't happen uh, for, us, uh, for us on the day. Um, the match itself like was fear was very scrappy it was very stop and start like and it kind of did come down maybe to your free takers how they performed on the day and like as we've mentioned uh caught the band for canolti sure is going to is going to drive them all over and our own free taker ego ego the wire was spot on on the day as well and scored all the frees like but other than that there was no real free flow flowing um free flow to the game and i suppose we would have preferred that, like if the ref did let a few more things go and if we had run at Canolti, um, maybe things would have been different and we'd have got a few scores that way because we have very good uh, forwards inside, especially in the full forward line, um, that if the ball did go in, uh, they would do damage. Um, but look, it just didn't happen for us on the day and in fairness, Canolti were the better team. Okay, so looking ahead now to the county final on Saturday, um, Thomas, from, from a Clonty perspective, I suppose, again, you've seen them in the semi-final. Um, what do you think they need to improve on if, you know, if, they have to, if they're to win their first ever senior county title? Yeah, I've seen them in a couple of games. And, you know, I, they've been very impressive in patches. Um, and then, as I referenced earlier, they've kind of lapsed um, in concentration at other times. Um, and obviously, you, you can't afford to let that happen against Drum and Inch. They're just such a, a refined and, and a polished side that they really will punish any lapse in, in concentration. And, you know, they'll, they'll punish it severely. I mean, I, you know, I can't see a situation where if Clonauti allow themselves to fall too far behind, them being able to claw their way back into the game. Like, in fairness, like Anna Carty did against Clonauti and... You know, I'll give a shout out to Siobhan. It, it was really impressive that you did come at them at the very end because the game just looked dead and gone. Um, but I, I think if Clonalty are in a similar situation against Drum, whereby they're chasing the game, uh, it's going to be very difficult for them because, you know, Drum know, Drum know how to win at this stage. Uh, I was talking to their manager, Pat Ryan, um, and he was talking about how they had, I suppose, kind of struggled against uh, Duhara over the years during that kind of dominance. And they eventually got over that. Um, and, and you can't underestimate, underestimate the impact of that. Uh, you know, it, suddenly now uh, they're playing like champions. They know how to win. Uh, it's a bit like that, you know, the Greg Kilkenny team or, or the current Limerick team in, in a hurling sense or any of the, you know, Cork, Kilkenny's and Camogie. You know, once they have that that instinct, and um, you know they can sniff out danger and they will really punish the side. So I think Clonaldi need to be really organised. Uh, work rate will be key, but I I don't anticipate work rate being a problem. They're a very hard working side. I think the problem uh, will be trying to mitigate the influence of uh, the drum midfielders and their half back line, um, particularly. Um, you know, particularly like the likes of Eva McGrath, you have to you have to pin her down somehow and have somebody chasing her, um, because you know they'll deliver ball and and then the forwards do the rest. That's very true. I think what what you said there about drum, you know, I suppose playing like champions and kind of having the 
confidence now and the way, way about to, to win games if they do get ahead. Um, I suppose, Siobhan, you know Drum very well, you know, playing playing him this year, you bet them this year. Um, there are other years where you lost him, you know, so you know both sides to Drum and Inch. But what would you say are their main strengths? Yeah, um, I suppose Drum and Inch, in fairness, um, they have a lot of strengths. Um, I think experience, I suppose, they, they have won before. Four, they have one on the big stage. They know what it takes to win. I suppose if they if they find themselves under pressure, um, in a match, they kind of reset, regroup. They don't panic, um, and they go again. They have lots of well-established, um, experienced players. I suppose you have your Joanne Ryan's, Siobhan McGrath, Dee Duns, um, Michelle Woodlock, just to name a few. Like but like from one to fifteen, uh, very experienced. They have all probably played county at, at some stage. Like they're a very well balanced team. Um, I think as Thomas mentioned there earlier, their half back line um are extremely strong. Like and from playing centre forward myself, I know they're a very tough line to mark, like the likes of Neve Tracy, Ethan McGrath, um, Maria Everson. I know she's kind of injured at the moment, but whether she'll start or not on the day will be still still have a huge influence to play. Um, Neve Tracy, like the day we played them, like she she dominated the half back line and mm. she attacked, and her attacks like were just so difficult to stop. Like when she gets that ball in her hand and takes off on on a solo run, it's very difficult to stop her. Um, so if she, if she attacks from there, she's going to cause Canolti um a lot of problems. Um, I think they're a very well balanced team. Um. Drum and inch, as I said, like from, from one to 15, and even their subs bench have probably all played some level uh, with Tipperary Camogie down through the year and have that experience um, and teamwork as well. Um, they're all they're all so so used to playing um with each other um that they know they know each other backwards at this stage. Um so yeah, overall drum very well balanced and experienced team. Uh, okay, Thomas, just Looking ahead again, um, I suppose Drummer going for a three in a row of county titles. Um, Clonty going for the first title. You know, they lost to Birds to Hire in 2018. Um, lost then to Drum last year in 2020. So the Drum, I suppose, have the psychological advantage in that they're going for a three in a row. Or, or is the hunger and the motivation that Clonty have, obviously, trying to win their first one? You know, who's at the advantage? that way yeah it's it's a difficult one really and, and i was kind of thinking about it earlier you know who who does have the advantage here uh, and i eventually kind of concluded that I, I i think the team which has the upper hand in the rivalry or, or, ha, has a psychological edge um and whether that's you know if you applied it to dublin and mayo before this year in gaelic football you know before mayo eventually got over them i mean they had so many tight battles, but Dublin will always just squeeze through or slip through in the end. And th there are numerous examples of that. So I, I, I'm kind of I'm inclined to think that Drum will go into it. Now, I, when, when speaking to Pat Ryan, he did say, you know, the three in a row hasn't kind of entered entered the fold or entered the discussion. And I believe him. He, you know, he's an honest man. And I'd say, you know, even with amongst the players, it probably doesn't. It might occupy their minds, but I wouldn't say it's openly discussed. It's it's more something that that you know we would ponder about and, and fans would ponder about. I, I think players and Siobhan will give an insight into this are are very much just focused on on, on the game at hand. Uh, and I know they say that, and people will say, "Oh, well, that's just a way of fending off difficult questions." But I kind of I'm inclined to believe it. Um, I think Clonalty have a you know. If they lose this now, it will be another final loss. Um, and, you know, they're a fantastic side. Uh, and getting to the final in itself is a big achievement. But suddenly, you know, you've lost a couple of finals uh, and it's very hard to kind of to keep clawing your way back and keep going back to the drawing board, uh, particularly when you know there's there's a team there like Trump who, who will almost always stand in your way and you're going to have to overcome them. So I, I, I think Trump do have an edge in, in that respect. Um, and, and I think the, you know, winning becomes a habit as kind of, as we discussed earlier. And I think they have now, that's very much an ingrained habit for them. Um, but look, I mean, Clonality will, you know, if ever you need an incentive to win a county final, 
penalty will really want to get one over them. Um, but you know, it, it, if you were to pin me down, I, I think Trump do have an edge here psychologically. Okay, uh, matchups then, Siobhan, will be huge. I think um, so many key players on both sides, managers will be looking to get their matchups right. Is there a particular, um, I suppose, battles that you're looking forward to seeing particular players marking each other? Or? Yeah, like there'll, there'll be a, a good few interesting um, matchups. Um, I suppose the big talking point will be pick up caught the van um, will she be man marked or will whoever just marking her on the day pick her um, like you'll be looking at Ethan McGrath if like caught st- started centre forward against us Ethan McGrath seems to be starting centre back uh, for drum so would that be a match up like two big two big names in, in Tipperary Camogie facing, facing off against each other would be very interesting um, I suppose then Courtney Ryan, um, Penalty centre back uh, against Ann Everson from Drum, uh, two very um, good, strong, and experienced players as well uh, coming up against each other. So that will be a good one to watch. Um, I think Cora Hennessy and Bernadette Ryan, uh, the midfield pairings for Penalty, um, they've been working very well um, together this year. Um, lots of experience. Um, they work really. They work really hard. Uh, up and down the pitch. So whoever from Drum, um, Mary Burke or even McGrath, maybe if they are starting midfield for Drum, they'll have they'll have a, a big job on their hands to cope with Bernie and Cora. I think Cora has been playing exceptionally well um, at the moment. Um, I suppose then Neve Tracy, um, maybe would she be picking up Casey Hennessy? That would be an interesting battle. Um, as I said earlier there, Neve Tracy um, is an attacking um, half back and she, the day we play them, she caused massive problems. Like when when she attacks, so your half forward, if it's Casey, like will she will she chase her up and down the field for the day as well? So that would be an interesting one um to watch. And I suppose drums inside forward line um are dangerous. Like D Dunn, Joanne Ryan, Michelle Woodlock, or whoever else, um Miriam maybe or whoever else might be in there. I think they will take a lot of watching. And I think Penalty's full back line um, would be under pressure to, to manage them, them, them couple of players for drum. So, a lot, of, yeah, in fairness, there'll be a lot of interesting uh, matchups, and it will be interesting to see which, which manager um, will get them right in the day. Yeah, just listen to you there, Siobhan, talk about all the different matchups, just, I suppose, get even more excited for the game. I really think we're in for a, for a thriller this Saturday. Um, I suppose the grand finale of the FBD Insurance Senior Championship. It's been a brilliant championship, and I think it's fair to say, you know, even though both teams suffer defeats on, along the way, I think the best two teams have reached the final, and you know, I think we're in for a, a cracker. Um, I suppose an interesting one there. You mentioned about Cosh. Where will she play? Will she be man marked? Thomas, if you were manager you know, of Clonanty, where would you play Cot Van? I mean, you've seen her with Tip. You've seen her with Clonanty. Where, mm. where do you think she should start? Yeah, it's an interesting one for Kieran Hammersley, the the penalty manager, and 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 I concur with just what Siobhan said there. In that, you know, both Pat Ryan and 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 Kieran, you know, the game won't be, I think, dictated by what happens on the sideline. You know, it, obviously it's up to the players on the pitch, but it'll probably be shaped by it. You know, by by the tactical matchups. Um, in terms of where Coy plays, I mean, it, it's. You know, it's very interesting because we've mentioned the the drum half back line and how potent they are and how how effective they are. And Clonalty obviously have to focus on on finding a way of reducing their influence. So I think you know they're going to have to. I think the best bet is to kind of pack the middle third, um, and and then maybe isolate kind of uh, quite to van inside. Now that's kind of an easy. It's easy to say that you know if the two-person full forward line or whatever. But there's no point having Coyce um, kind of out around the centre of the field, chasing Eve McGrath, you know, around the place. Um, and similarly, the other the other half-backs. I mean, because that's not utilising her main strength, which is her shooting ability. So I, I think it'll be, it'll be up to the players around her um, to work extremely hard. And, and fitness, you know, it's going to... It's going to require a lot of endurance. The Clonality, the corner forwards are going to, like, the way I would see it is they, they should hug the sideline, you know, create almost a vacuum inside in that centre area behind Ethan McGrath, behind the kind of, between the 65 and the 20 metre line. And that's where Coit should uh, should operate. Um, 
you know, she, she needs as much space as possible uh, to to thrive. Um, but you also have to be cognizant that, you know, it isn't a one player operation. And, um, you know, and I've seen this, you know, she she does most of the scoring. Um, but the forwards around her really, you know, really work hard to enable that, whether that's winning frees or whether that's creating space. So, you know, a lot will be up to the likes of Casey Hennessy. Midfield battle will be very Cora Hennessy, Bernadette Ryan, the Clownty midfielders. Um, you know, they, they've been really impressive to me in terms of their work work ethic. You know, probably under um it's understated how influential they've been in, in many games. Uh, but they're gonna have to, you know, they're gonna have to be well energized this weekend because they're gonna have to do an awful lot of running. And it'll be, I think. It could only have been quite scrappy around the centre of the field, around the middle third. Um, you know, and then we'll see a bit of flashy point scoring, I'd say, at either end because of the calibre of each forward line. Um, but I think it is that middle third where, where the game will be won. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see, uh, you know, what way both teams line out and whether you know, whether Clonality can utilise Coitavan, because I do have a little bit of reservations, you know, I, outside of Coit, I, I'm not sure they have the firepower that Drum and Inch have. I think Drum and Inch have an awful lot of sharpshooters, and I, I think they can just ping points over from from all kinds of places. Not quite sure Clonality have that ability, um, but, you know, I could be proven wrong. Okay, Tom, so final question, Siobhan, for you. Just... What kind of game are you expecting and and who's going to win and, and why? Yeah, I suppose um, what kind of game? Sure, it's going to depend a lot on the weather conditions and maybe what, what way the referee um, looks after the game. Um, like this time of the year, you could have bad conditions. It could be a lot of rocking. There could be no free-flowing game. But if the, if the day is good, then which, which would suit Canolti and Drum, because as we said previously, their forwards are so skillful. If they get any chance at all, they will really come to the score, come to the fore and take take on really good uh, scores. Um, I think whichever team maybe starts um, the best on the day as well has a massive chance of winning it. Like I think if Canolti start well, like they did against us, um, I think they will have the hunger like... Um, to push through and, and hold on to the lead if they can get a lead at all and win it. On the other hand, uh, if Drum starts strong as well, like and and get any bit of lead at all, they they'll have the experience and, and the maturity to hold on to that lead uh, and see where it can take them. Um, I suppose I think um, from an inch will probably. I think myself that they they're the better team at the moment and 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 will win the game. Um, as I mentioned earlier, in, in terms of their strengths, like they're, they're, they're more experienced. They have the experience of winning, um, which is very important up in the reg to have that experience. Um, they're a more balanced team. Um, they have more of a, a score and threat, I suppose, overall, whereas Canolti, I think, um, are very reliant on cost. Um, like in the semi-final against us, she scored, I think, was it 11 points? Um, and ten of them are ten of them are for, from freeze. I know, so that's something Drum will have to be aware of. Is, is we know we can't you can't foul Canoti because Court will put them over all day. Um, but like if Canoti uh, want to push on and win, other players will have to step up and, and support her and get some scores on the day, um, which they are capable of. But it's looking back on the previous matches, it was Court mainly that was doing all the scoring, whereas Drum would have a more overall uh, spread of scorers, which I think we would see him true on the day. Um, I know Thomas mentioned earlier the fact that Drum are going for three in a row and, and their manager said it doesn't come into it, but I suppose it is secretly maybe another driving factor and a, and a motivation for him um, because to win three in a row county finals in, in Tipperary is a massive achievement. So that, that could be there. Um, Maybe they're not talking about it openly, but it's something I'm sure that each player is thinking about at home um, in the lead up to the county final of, of what an achievement it would be to, to win that. Um, and I suppose then looking at their, their fixture list, they have a, a Munster final, um, Darlene, I think, isn't it? The following yeah, the following weekend. Sunday. Um, yeah, so like they have a really busy schedule. So like to, to win a county final 
in Tipperary would be a massive boost um, going into the Munster final the following weekend as well. So just going, going on all of that um, and from playing myself, both Canote and Drum and Inch this year, I just think that, that Drum and Inch um, are probably the more balanced, even team and I think their experience and Hurling would probably get them over the line um, at the weekend. Okay, Siobhan, and just that's the postponed Munster final, obviously, from last year. Yeah, 2020 Munster yeah. final, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so that's that one. So, uh, Thomas, then over to you. So your predictions, who do you who do you think will win it? Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with Siobhan on this one. I, I think anything other than a drum win would have to rank as a, a fairly large upset. Um, I think Toronto will win it. I think they're they're at a more advanced stage than Clonelty. Um, and I share that view. You know, we mentioned the reliance I got. As I said earlier, I just think they have a more polished group of hurlers. They're a little bit more refined. Uh, their ability to, uh, you know, they're clinical. They're extremely clinical. Um, now, let's not forget, and, and, you know, this should be noted that this is an understrength penalty team by, you know, they're missing a number of key players this season. Um, but it certainly hasn't seemed that way. They, they've evolved and they, they've kind of re redesigned their, their game um, and they've been really impressive. But I, I think beating Drum would just a, a bridge of fire for them um, in, in 2021. They're, they're coming and they're evolving. Um, but with the talent Trump have and, and just with the experience they have and the kind of winning culture they've created at this stage, I think they'll be 2021 county champions. And I think they'll be 2020 monster champions as well. And possibly 2021 monster champions, you never know. Um, what I'm saying is, if I think if they win on Sunday, uh, you know, that momentum will carry through to the following weekend, even though it's a short break and that's difficult for them. But um yeah, I would anticipate a drum win. Okay, Thomas and Siobhan, thanks a million. It was great to have you on the show to preview the senior uh, county final this Saturday. Drum and Inch and Clonty Rossmore, I suppose the sequel, a uh, repeat of the 2020 county final. It makes up with all my years now. Um, so I suppose Saturday afternoon we'll, we'll, we'll know who'll be crowned 2021 champions. Um, Thomas, I know you're going to stay with me and just chat about the Junior B2 um, county final. Siobhan, before we let you go, um, I suppose a huge win for Nakavilla, Dunnaskee, Kickhams at the weekend, beating Shannon Rovers in the Intermediate County Final. Um, Any time down through the years, there was a under 12, 14, 16, minor, A county final. It always seemed to be Nakavilla and Akarty. Uh, they're going to be up senior next year and other teams to contend with. And I, I imagine they're going to be a very formidable senior side next year. Yeah, look, um, it's it's a massive win uh, for uh, Kickhams. Um, as you said there earlier, yeah, for the last couple of years, we have been competing um, against them under 12s, 14s, 16s, uh, minor uh, county finals. And yeah, going forward now into the next couple of years, we're going to be competing with them at, at senior level. Look, I suppose it's great from a, a West Tip uh, point of view that we have another um, West team up senior, like you've ourselves, Kickhams, um, you have Cashel uh, and Canote, like, which are really strong um, senior teams at the moment. Like, and I suppose down through the years, um, senior Camogie would have, would have been dominated by North um, and mid teams, I suppose. So it's, it's great, look, from, from our point of view that we have, we have loads of strong Camogie teams in West Tip and for the overall development of Camogie, I suppose it's, it's looking very well. Uh, yeah, it's going to our close rivals now, uh, kick them, so it'll be interesting. So knowing our look, we'll probably meet them in the first round of the senior championship uh, next year, which will, will prove to be a, a thrilling affair. Uh, but no, look, they're, they're putting in massive work there in, over in Dundrum. Um, in the background, our underage structure is very organised, very strong, and they have good mentors, good officers um, driving the whole thing on. Uh, and like there's girls there, say like Arena Friday, Bet Ryan, Sheena Ryan, Neve Slattery that have been playing for years um, with Kickham uh, in fairness, and, and they deserve to get the, the free um, at the weekend. 
and uh, yeah as I said their underage structure is very strong so they're going to they're going to compete at senior and, and going to be there for for the coming few years and look the senior championship in in general is getting very very competitive like um your stars came up this year like very strong cash look the previous year very strong all competing like so as I said, it's very far for the development of Camogie um, in Tipperary, and it just shows the good work that's going on um, in the clubs and in the underage development structures within the county that all these um, teams are coming up and competing at the high level. And I suppose that's what you want. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's going to be an exciting championship now. Um, next year we kick them up and um, yeah, it's, it's getting more and more exciting every year. Thanks very much, Ron, and thanks for joining us on the Camogie Report podcast. No bother, Jar. Thank you. Okay, so Thomas, before I let you go, um, I know you covered the Junior B2 County Final at the weekend for the Nina Garden. A great win for, for Silver Mines, beating um, Cashel 4 9 13 points. Uh, what kind of game was it? Yeah, the first thing to say, I mean, it was actually, I, I, was, I have to say I was impressed with the quality. And, you know, I hadn't been at a, a Junior B2 kind of championship game before this, so I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't think, you know, and I think most people will, will forgive me for saying that I didn't expect the quality to be, you know, to be overly high, but it was actually, it was a high tempo game. And it, it was, it was a fascinating game because if you were to look at it, I mean, Silverine started really well. Uh, and then they kind of failed. Cashel came right back into the game. And it was really striking. Cashel, are, their athleticism w- was really striking. They could run the ball from uh, the half-back line. Uh, you know, I was just the likes of uh, Rebecca Delahunty, a couple of them there, a couple of players, Clodo O'Gorman, all really pacey and good under the high wall as well, which, you know, clearly skillful players. So they raced into it in the second quarter um, and they were kind of going well, uh, even until after half time. But Silver Mines managed to stay in the game. And, and I think it's a lesson to any team. You know, they knew they were they were under kind of intense pressure, but they just kind of kept plugging away. And um, Derbless Slattery was excellent on freeze. She knocked over a couple of freeze. Rebecca Ford was very good from play. She got a goal at the end when the game was wrapped up, but she also hit for one you know, really important point there, uh, probably around the 48 minutes uh, from play, which was kind of a, almost a decisive score in that it really kind of consolidated the, the mind's momentum. So they hung on in the game. Uh, they worked extremely hard. Um, and they kind of managed to grind out the win. Um, like if you were looking at it, you'd, you'd probably say Cashel were the flashier side in terms of their ability but but the minds were really you know they were really intelligent with how they use the ball uh, and I was really impressed with them I probably impressed the fact that some of those players have won a um a, a county football title the week before which is is testament to them and, and their manager um uh, Jonathan Hayes I think you know that deserves they deserve great credit for that because you know I I kind of I half equated it to the Lockmore Castellini senior hurlers and footballers. Now, I know it's a different level and the standard is different, but still, you know, those those players deserve a lot of credit and their manager equally. You know, they've put in a lot of effort over the course of the year in both codes. And it's a lesson to any other, you know, to many other players that you can actually thrive in both codes if the uh, the will and and the determination is there. Yeah, and it, it looked to me as well that I suppose they got the crucial goals. The crucial, I think they started off with two early goals yeah. and then Cashel came back and they finished with goals again, I suppose. Well, Cashel, did Cashel have any goal chances or they didn't seem to be able to get a goal that's probably needed? Yeah, and that's probably, you know, that probably relates to what I was saying about Silver Mines' work rate. They seem to, they seem to really kind of compress the space when... Uh, when they needed to. Joanne O'Brien got those two um, early goals for the Mines um, and they were superb. The second one in particular was a superb goal. Um, you know, I have to give her a huge credit, but Silver Mines actually kind of, they seemed to rejig um, when they realised Cashel were, were were getting the upper hand. Uh, the Cashel corner forward, uh, I get her name, uh, Jean Walsh, sorry, incredibly pacey. You know, she scored 
I think it was after half time, she scored three identical points. And it, it was almost like watching a replay on repeat. They moved her out from kind of car forward to the wing. And she got the ball. She she turned her marker and sped in and just slotted a point. And she did that three times. Um, so I, I, after that, Silver Mines knew you know, something done. And whatever they did, I think they, you know, they yeah. might have brought an extra body back. And uh, and they ensured that she wasn't given the time and space because you know on each of those three occasions she was, you know, she was hunted for a goal. Um, but she probably wisely took her points. Um, and, and that was the thing about Silver Mines. I think you have to give them tactically how they set up. Um, was important. Um, and, and you might say, well, it, it's a it's a junior B two game, like it, you know. It, is strategy and our tactics really that important to it? But I, I think they were on on Saturday. I, I was impressed with how organised the minds were, um, and I was impressed with them as a whole. I think they're, you know, they're a really good bunch. And similarly, Cashel, and that will feed into their, you know, their senior sides in the coming years. I think it bodes well for both clubs. In fairness, uh, surely it does. Thomas, we'll leave it there. Thanks a million for uh, joining us on the Camogie Report podcast to preview the Senior County Final and to also review the Junior B2 game. And we look forward to chatting you again soon. Indeed. Pleasure. Thank you, Jeremy. So just congratulations again to Silver Mines on winning the Junior B2 Final at the weekend. And of course, the Knock Villa Dunnesky Kickham's uh, Intermediate County Champions 2021. A massive achievement for them, for the club, um, coming right up from Junior B. Uh, the last couple of years and now we'll be playing Senior Camogie next year they had a comprehensive victory over Shannon Rovers um, a real complete team performance winning on a final scoreline of 5 goals and 14 points to 3 goals and 6 um, so the opening quarter was was a tight enough close affair Shannon Rovers you know huge work rate put loads of pressure on the Knockville team uh, got an early goal from Ethan Lockney but um, just before the water break um Knockville struck with, with two goals of their own. And I think that put them in their in the driving seat as well as Ashan Rovers lost Julian McKenna, the midfielder there, through injury. She was a massive loss. And after the water break, Kickham just found a new level, a new gear, and really drove on from there. Um, they built on them two goals. And I suppose they never looked back. Um, even though Shan Rovers kept battling, never gave up. But in the end, you know, Knockville had some great individual performance as well and they had a huge spread of scores Cueve McCarthy finished with four points Irina Friday had a goal and four points uh, Emer Gleeson a goal Ellen Brown had two points Emer Heffernan two goals and four points and Emma Ryan with a goal so um, no doubt Nock Villa Dunsky Kickings will be a formidable force in the Senior Championship uh, next year and if you didn't get a chance to, to watch that match or if you want to watch it back it's, it's up on our YouTube channel so be sure to to check it out, uh, have a look. And also we're still looking to reach the thousand subscribers. So make sure you subscribe to our new, to our YouTube channel and um, and let's get to a thousand subscribers. So next up to help me preview the Junior A semi-final and the Junior B final, uh, the two Junior A semi-finals and the Junior B kind of final all happened this weekend as well. Uh, and delighted to be joined by PRO Philly Ryan. So this Sunday sees the Junior B County Final take place in the County Camogie Grounds Rag at 10.30 a.m. It's between Laura and McCarkey Burris. Um, McCarkey Burris bet Portro at the weekend in their in their semi-final uh, on Saturday, two five to seven points, while Laura at Bet Gurton Hoo in their semi-final a couple of weeks ago, winning two fourteen to two six. Um, I suppose first of all, Philly, it's three weeks since Laura has played um, because obviously the McCarkey and Portro. Uh, original fixture had to be postponed due to a bereavement so they just pl- played at the weekend gone Laura ha- will have had a three week break is that a bit of a disadvantage for Laura or do you think it'll have any uh, effect on, on the outcome of this game um, fifth junior B final I'm not sure if they're in a row but they're definitely, definitely in their fifth final uh, they've lost uh, four of them already so they'll be surely very focused to finally get promotion to junior A ranks and uh, so I don't think it'll be uh, it'll be a big disadvantage uh, to Laura. Uh, McCarthy, of course, are, are fresh after their win over Portro. Uh, they got ahead early in the game with two goals, one from Emma O'Sullivan and one from Sir O'Mara. So uh, and kept the lead all the way through. Uh, Portro were hanging in the game with a good lot of uh, good free taking, but uh, McCarthy were slightly the stronger team in that semi-final. So it's very hard to predict the winner uh, with, with Laura getting to. 
uh, finals and um, they've good score power up front with Celine Cleary and Claude McIntyre tip senior and I just see Claude McIntyre was in Ireland to the family last week so she's definitely fit anyway so um, yeah I couldn't call this one between Lauren McCarthy um, um, and Geraldine and where, where would you think Claude is likely to play for Laura? Is she in the half forward line or? Yeah, she was she was wing forward, centre forward last year against Temple Moore and uh, did a lot of damage there going on, on Maisie runs. So um, it's very hard to stop when she's solo and true, um, uh, especially when she gets near goal, shortens the stick and pops over the points. Very difficult to stop Claude and McIntyre. And I know uh, McCarthy Boris won the, the Summer League I suppose, and um, but like you said, Laura, you know, were finalists last year, so it is very difficult to to, to predict. Um, uh, I suppose we'll have to wait and see on Sunday who who eventually will win it. And I suppose a big prize on offer not only county champions but also coming up to junior A. Um, we see Tep Moore won it last year and and did quite well in junior A this year when he got beaten there in the quarter final at the weekend. So a big prize on offer for for Laura. Or, or, or McCarthy Boris and I suppose McCarthy Boris seems to have a good momentum at the moment I know it's juvenile and stuff like that 16 and, and 14 but um, would you have some of them under 16 players uh, on this team? Um, the, goal, the goalkeeper Michelle Flanagan uh, um, is either a minor or under 16 but no they have none of their under 16A uh, team playing it. they don't have uh, Kate Ralph or Alicia Carney or any of their county under 16 players playing um, on this team, no. So they have uh, uh, most of them are. Uh, the M.O. Mar- M. Sullivan, who's a, a, a played tip minor this year, is playing midfield. Uh, uh, Joanne O'Keefe mid- uh, midfield as well is very young. So they have very young midfield line there, but um, uh, don't have any under 16 A's on it, no. Okay. So, and, and ha- any predictions, or you're you, you just feeling it's a bit too close to call, is it? I couldn't call it, no. I think it's going to be a very close match. Okay, so that's this uh, Sunday, 10.30am in the County Mode Grounds Drag, FBD Insurance Junior B Championship Final between McCarthy Boris and Laura. Uh, also on Sunday, we have the two uh, County Junior A uh, Championship Semi-Finals. We have Drummond Inch and Money Gaw. That game takes place at 11am in Boris Lee. And in the other semi-final, we have Boherlan and Holy Cross. That game is in the County Comoy Grounds Drag at 1pm. Isn't that right, Philly? That's right, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to those two semis. And we see uh, at the weekend, uh, Drum had a win over Ballina in their quarterfinal, while Money God had a big win over Temple Moore in, in, in their quarterfinal. So this will be an, an interesting and clash, Drum and Inch versus Money God. How, how do you see this one going? Um. Yeah, what you call it, uh, when Money Gall played Borland or missing Neve Larkin uh, for most of the games, she, she arrived late for more. But um, I just see that uh, she contributed 1 4 from play for Money Gall last weekend. So um, um, someone up there to help Marie Teen with the scoring up front for Money Gall, definitely. And uh, so Money Gall will, will be um, a, a good test for Drummond Inch. Drummond Inch. Uh, top of the group, uh, our very balanced team for June Ray. So, uh, it's 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 uh, my prediction would be uh, have drum having top of the group that possibly drum will sneak this one against Money Money Gall. Money Gall, of course, have Mary Ryan, who's fantastic experience. She's playing at center back, Marie Teen plays either center forward or midfield for, for Money Gall. So, it's 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 a uh, it's a strong Money Gall team down the center. Uh, I noticed um, Katie O'Dwyer scoring a lot of goals at minor level and junior level for for Drum. So so if she keeps cracking in the goals there, um, Drum will be uh, in it there thereabouts as well. So I don't know. Have you an opinion on the Drum uh, Money Gall match, Ger? Yeah, look, Drum had a great win at the weekend against Ballina and have been going very well at junior. But I suppose I just saw the result of the Money Gall and Moore game, and I was surprised. Um, you know, Drum only drew with Temple Moore a couple of weeks ago. Again, it could have gone either way. And yet, Money God bet them quite convincingly, uh, going on the on the scoreboard anyway. So yeah, well, it was me... one five to five points at half time. So it was very much a, a second half takeover by Money God. Only a goal in at half time, and and uh, just Temple Moore didn't click in the second half. Just uh, didn't score at all. So um, the first half was close. Yeah, so I, I'm sure it will be a, a close affair. That's in uh, that Strumming Inch and Money. Uh, in the other semi-final, then, Borland and Holy Cross. Uh, Borland topping their group 
uh, Holy Cross came out of the group uh, with Drum. Um, I don't know, were they third in that group? Second? I'm not sure. Um, Holy Cross finished in that group. But uh, Borland, Morton very well. Philly put up another big score against Kildangan. And um, I suppose we'll be hoping, we'll probably be favourites in this game. Yeah, pro probably will be possibly favourites. But um, Kildangan were missing a few with illness and, and uh, there was COVID and uh, a, couple, a couple of. Kildang and regulars missing against Borland. So, um, as Olivia Hogan said, there were three regulars missing for that match against Borland. So, that, that would have weakened them a small bit. And we got off to a flyer start in Borland there, scoring 214 in the first half, which was very good. But the second half was much closer. So, uh, it's hard to know. Holy Cross similarly uh, scored three goals, two from Sarah Ryan uh, early on. So, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to know ourselves in Holy Cross. Have a lot of rivalry built up. We played each other loads of times over the last two years. We seem to be in last two years always in the same groups. Played each other in, in the league last year. Played each other in the championship. So uh, that'll be a, a, a close one to call. And they have Siobhan Ryan returned uh, to goal after an injury as well. So she's back as well. So Holy Cross back at full strength. And Lauren and Dwyer centre forward is sure to get a few points. Uh, Borlan have changed Sarah Delaney from centre back to centre forward to give it more oomph up front. So. Hopefully that will work from Orlando point of view. So two good centre forwards there in Lorna O'Dwyer and Sarah Delaney. Great stuff. And lots of big names there uh, will be in action at the weekend. And then two junior A semi-finals and of course the junior B final as well on Sunday. So a busy Sunday morning of Camogie in Tipperary. Um, after a, a bumper uh, Saturday as well with the FBD Insurance Senior Championship final. So loads look forward to uh Keep an eye on our website, tipperarycomogie.com, for all the fixtures and our social media for all the updates. And uh, I suppose this stage of the year, we wish all the clubs the very best of luck um, in the uh, in the finals and in the semi-finals. And um, next weekend, next week's podcast, we'll be reviewing the senior final and previewing the junior A county final. So loads more come next week. Uh, if you enjoyed the show today, make sure to give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. <laughs>